Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. So, it's roughly two years since I made the first posts and footage about running the newer Coffee Lake CPUs in an old Z170 and Z270 based motherboard. And around six months after that I made the uh, refresh video about running the new 8-core Coffee Lake 1900K in the, uh, I mean with the Z170M OC formula that's on the right, right hand side of, on, of the image right now. And it got, it got huge interest back then. People had a lot of interest in this topic because many were wondering why you cannot run the newer 6-core and 8-core Coffee Lake CPUs in an old Skylake or KB Lake based buffer board because they technically have nearly the same socket. And uh, well, it all changed when uh, Nick Shi from ASRock first released the uh, modified BIOS for the Z170 OC formula and Z170M OC formula to support these newer CPUs and uh, it was so easy to run the 8700K and, even, and later on the 1900K and the other chips as well on the Z170M OC formula as well as on the big version. big version. There were no downsides whatsoever, it was very easy and uh, the uh, Z170M OC formula could even match many of the new high-end models performance-wise even with the newer CPUs and the MOCF was even used for many records back in uh, like 2017 Computex uh, with the 8700K. There were many other tests uh, as well by like guys over at WinRaid. Many managed to do some kind of modifications to their older motherboard BIOSes to support the newer CPUs but there were a lot of downsides uh, back in the early days, uh, which weren't present on the ASRock uh, uh, OC Formula series boards. Like, uh, it was a very common issue that you, could, you couldn't run hyperthreading on, I mean, with the i7 CPUs like the 8700K, and there were overclocking issues that you couldn't really overclock the CPUs at all, so you could run them only at stock. So many people wondered that is this an ASRock only thing? Because it worked so well on the OC Formula series Skylake boards, but uh, it never really went that wide uh, with the other ASRock models. Even the uh, modified BIOSes, they weren't available for download at the official ASRock website, only at sites like HWBot to uh, more like advanced users. But even then, they were easily accessible at the forums and it was very easy to set up those uh, modified BIOSes uh, to the motherboard, so you just had to flash the BIOS, set up your CPU in, and uh, pretty much uh, go and run it e like, just like if it was a KB Lake or Skylake CPU. You only had to do those simple hardware level modifications to the board in order to run those CPUs, like uh, short the two specific golden contact pads underneath the CPU, uh, or find the same uh, modification on the motherboard itself so that the board will turn on when you press the power, power on button on the motherboard. Uh, but now, recently, it all changed when uh, the guys over at WinRaid, they uh, released a very simple and easy to use tool to modify any BIOS for the Skylake or KB Lake bo motherboards to support these newer CPUs. Uh, so uh, you pretty much just need to download like for example the latest official BIOS for the Skylake based buffer board r run the uh, make all the necessary modifications to the to the BIOS file with the tool with like one simple click and it will do all the required steps for you it will fix all the issues like hyperthreading issues overclocking issues and so on it's really really easy to use and it works perfectly like on the Z170M OC formula uh, back in the back in the day, like in early 2018, and why am I why am I getting back to this topic after so long time? Even when I have newer motherboards and so on, was that uh, one uh, local guy approached me at, at our uh, Finnish tech media site forums called IO Tech, uh, and uh, the guy told me that he he has got this Maximus 9 formula from uh, some other guy nearby. Don't know, maybe a friend, maybe from a friend or someone, and he thought about running a newer CPU like 9700K, 
uh, 8700K, depending on the price that he could uh, find the CPU for, and uh, thought about running the CPU with the Skylake, I mean the, with the KB Lake based Maximus 9 formula. And he asked me that could I do all the necessary modifications in order to run that newer CPU in the old motherboard. And I said yes, because I didn't really bother that much about modifying the BIOSes myself back in the day when the, uh, the topic was well, like more common in uh, like news at the tech media sites because it was just so easy to run the newer CPUs with the MOCF. It wasn't only about saving cost. People wanted to keep going with the uh, ASRock Z170 MOC formula because it's a really, really powerful motherboard. It uh, can match many motherboards, even newer ones, performance-wise, and people really wanted to just keep going on with that board, not only to save money uh, by not buying a newer motherboard. So uh, that, that's all, that was also my reason. I didn't care about other motherboard models when I had the MOCF. But now, since we have the tool out now from WinRaid, I thought about giving it, giving it a go and trying it out myself. So I said yes to the guy and uh, he sent me the motherboard and the CPU over like uh, uh, one or two weeks ago. And now I have been working with the with the combination and it's it works really really well so uh, the things you have to do uh, in order to run the uh, board I mean with in in order to run the CPU in the old motherboards uh, is still the same so uh, you have to modify the BIOS so that it supports these newer CPUs like uh, get the micro codes in have all the uh, fixes I mean have all the required fixes so that you don't miss hyperthreading. Of course, hyperthreading doesn't. Uh, uh, hyperthreading is not included in the uh, more affordable 9700K Coffee Lake model, but doesn't really matter. And and make sure you can still overclock the CPU when you run it in the old motherboard. And uh, you have to do the hardware level modifications to the board or to the CPU so that you can actually turn on the system. And that was one of the main issues with the. Uh, all the boards back then because it was very very hard to locate the uh, SKT uh, OCC uh, pin on the motherboard that stands for socket occupied pin uh, that matters I mean that means that when that particular pin is short to ground like you can see on my MOCF right over here it means that the motherboard thinks that the CPU socket is occupied by a CPU and it will let the system to turn on. The other more like earlier way of doing it was to short those two specific golden contact pads on the uh, underside of the CPU so that it would do the same thing. But it's a lot more easier to do that on the motherboard once you find out the required location uh, because well painting the underside of a CPU is something like silver paint is really really pain in the butt because well you can short things you don't want to it might you might actually spill some uh, silver paint on the backside caps and resistors at the center of the CPU and it's really painful process to do and uh, now it's actually quite easy to find out where that specific location is so uh, the uh, socket occupied pin is uh, uh, located in uh, the Nuvoton chip on most of the motherboards. So for example on the Maximus 9 series boards like Apex, Formula, Extreme, the uh, uh, Nuvoton uh, NC, the model number is NCT6793D. So that's the one located over here. Uh, and at the sound area of the board, the uh, socket occupied pin I will show you the diagram uh, on the video right now. So it's the number, pin number 102. The first pin is labeled with this uh, round marking over here and the uh, uh, pin number starts to go up uh, pin, by, uh, pin by pin uh, counterclockwise on this chip. So the uh, pin number 102 is the pin number 6 when calculated from the top part of the left hand side over here. But these pins are really, really small to solder on, so uh, it's really hard to make that modification directly to the 
chip itself. There is one small resistor over here, uh, which is connected directly after the pin. I will show you better like pictures uh, of these modifications so that you can see them better, uh, in a better view. I will not be doing the soldering process on camera because it's much, much easier to show that uh, modifications to you later on with pictures like this after making them. But anyway, so the uh, it's much easier to solder the, uh, the jumper wire to the resistor directly after the pin and then that to ground. So it's the yellow wrapper wire over here. Uh, this is just for testing purposes right now. When I will before sending the board back to the guy, I will actually uh, put the wire like laying towards the PCB of the board and uh, f uh, secure it with some hot glue or similar so that I can put the original heatsink uh, assembly and the plastics back onto the motherboard. And uh, well, you can you have to find this out with a multimeter and make sure that it works. Uh, by measuring the resistance and it's actually the same chip on the MOCF as well but it's just located on the uh, back side of the board so the uh, same chip is located at the back side of the board on the OCF the model number is a little bit different but it's technically the same so on the MOCF it's NCT 6791D and the pin number 102 just happens to go directly into the motherboard's PCB after uh, coming out from the uh, chip and the pin just appears on this uh, side of the motherboard between the first and second PCI Express slot and it's this small pad over here and it's very easy to short that to ground with this yellow wire again. So that's the way you have to do, that's the way of doing it. So if you short the socket occupied pin directly to ground, you don't have to do anything to the back side of the CPU. So, uh, for example, uh, I ran that combination for like uh, one to two years and I didn't do anything to the back side of the CPU. I didn't even isolate those uh, few uh, specific golden contact pads in order to prevent those specific CPU socket contact pins from burning out. I didn't really care about it and I haven't seen any uh, like damage or downside and I think it, you I'm, I, I, I personally think that you don't necessarily have to do that. Maybe security wise it might be wise to uh, isolate those uh, specific pads to prevent the pins from burning out but I never really cared about doing that so for example, on the 97K, if you take a look at it, we can see that this CPU is... So this CPU is a PO Stepping 97K. The label is SRELT, that stands for PO Stepping 97K, and batch is week 41 from 2018. And when looking at the back side of the CPU, we can pretty much see that there's nothing on the golden contact pads on the back side of the CPU. None have been uh, connected together with silver paint and none of them have been isolated. And I think, pers I personally think it works just all right by doing it this way. So we can put the CPU back to the socket right now. So that's the other step. And the other step, what you have to do, for example, if you modify an ASUS board, is that we have to uh, get the modified BIOS to the BIOS chip on the board, which is located over here, just next to the uh, second full length PCI Express slot on the Maximus 9 formula. And uh, we have to flash the BIOS. Well, the easiest way of doing it is to uh, use the USB, uh, USB BIOS flashback on the, on the motherboard at the rear I.O., which is usually located. You just put the uh, you, you just put the BIOS file to an empty FAT32 uh, USB stick, place it in the correctly labeled USB port over here, and press and hold the uh, BIOS flashback button for three seconds and it will start the process. But the uh, thing about USB flashback is that it has some weird or like security features. So it will not allow you to uh, 
flash just any BIOS to the motherboard for security reasons. So if you, for example, download the latest BIOS from Asus website, for example, for the Maximus 9 formula, in order to flash the BIOS using the USB BIOS flashback, you have to name the BIOS file to m9f.cap and then it will flash the BIOS uh, successfully using the BIOS flashback. The M9F stands for Maximus 9 formula. And when we modify the latest retail BIOS, for example, with the uh, WinRAID tool, it doesn't work even if we name it as m9f.cap. It will not uh, continue with the flashing process. So we have to force, we have to bypass this security thing and force the uh, flashing process to the BIOS chip on the motherboard. So we actually have to do uh, one hardware level modification near the uh, BIOS, near the BIOS chip over here. I will show you it in a better uh, picture right now. So there are two specific contact pads on the left hand side of the BIOS chip which, are, which aren't connected together by default. We have to short them uh, together using like solder or something like uh, liquid metal or similar and that will allow you to force flash any uh, BIOS file into the BIOS chip on the motherboard. Some guys even used like flat-headed screwdriver to connect the two pads together while doing the uh, USB uh, flashback process. I uh, quickly tried that, tried that way myself before soldering the pads together, but it was quite hard and you might, actually, you might accidentally short something else together. So I think it's safest way to actually use a proper uh, tin solder to connect the two pads together and you can just leave it like that after that. You don't have to remove that solder uh, connection after doing the flashing process. So those are the steps you have to do. So short the two pads together near the BIOS chip so that you can actually flash the modified BIOS to the motherboard and then you have to find the socket occupied pin or short the two specific pads together underneath the CPU and then you can turn on the system and get into the BIOS and into the operating system. So from here I will show you how to step by step modify the uh, latest retail BIOS for the Maximus 9 formula, how to get it set up so that we can actually use the Coffeelex CPUs uh, with the motherboard. But the uh, tool is very picky. You have to know exactly what CPU you want to run with the motherboard when you will be doing when you do the process. The, uh, it depends on what CPU model you will be running and what stepping the CPU actually is. And it's very very picky. So uh, you have to know whether your new 9700K or 9900K whether it's a PO stepping, so the older one, or the newer RO stepping. PO stepping CPUs are pretty much all 2018 or very very early 2019 and RO stepping CPUs are like from 2019 up to the first quarter and all CPUs after that pretty much. And same thing goes for 9700K. Uh, when I tried first with my 8700K it didn't, I mean it refused to post when I tried my old engineering sample 8700K which is technically the same stepping as the uh, final retail one, but retail one posts. So even when they are pretty much the same stepping and revision, the engineering sample doesn't post, but the retail one will post. So this will not work, e at least easily, if you want to run those very dodgy and old engineering sample models from, uh, which you can usually find from AliExpress or, like, or sites like that. So just saying. So first make sure what CPU model you want to run and then you can start with the modif mod modification process. So from here let's get going. I will show you how to modify the BIOS and how to get it flashed onto the motherboard. Alright so here we are on the desktop now and I will show you now I will show you how to modify the uh, latest uh, official BIOS from your motherboard's manufacturer's website in order to support these newer Coffee Lake 8th generation or 9th generation CPUs. First of all, be very uh, careful to run everything in uh, like admin mode. 
and if you have some un uh, ver if you have some very picky antivirus running on your uh, uh, operating system it's better to disable it completely for this process some antivirus programs are very picky about these programs for example if you have avast it will uh, put many of the programs included in the win rates uh, pack to uh, quarantine so uh, at, at least if you have avast antivirus you cannot do this process so just saying so it's easier to just disable your antivirus completely for this process so that everything will work smoothly but anyways so first of all you need the uh, tool from winrate.com i have it here in the 9f mod folder the 9f mod stands for nine formula so i have the coffee lake mod tool over here and then i have the latest bios file for the maximus 9 uh, formula it's the same on uh, my desktop as well and uh, I also recommend you get this tool, the UEFI tool over here. This program is to uh, transform uh, .cap files into .bin or .rom or from .bin to .rom. So uh, when you use this tool, the uh, transformation of those different file types is a lot more formal and it's a lot more certain to work. You can change bin file to .rom file by just uh, right-clicking and renaming the file and change it from .bin to .rom but it's not so formal compared to using a tool like this the uh, BIOS file what we uh, create in this process has to be named creative.rom specifically in order to be flashed to the uh, motherboard it cannot be creative.bin nor it can, it can be uh, creative.cap it's very picky it has to be named creative.rom so uh, that's why i recommend you get this tool so when you run this in windows 10 you have to run it in administration mode and uh, the first thing we will do is we will change the bus file from uh, .cap to .rom so we right click the uefi tool run as administrator then we click file open image file we uh, search for the bus file so it's maximus 9 formula asus 1301 from april 2018 we can see it's a cap file and are around 60 megabytes in size we click open we have ami aptio capsule we right click extract as is and uh, sorry we will right click and extract body so that we will get save as type image files dot rom or dot bin and we will click we can put anything we can put for example m9 f so it will be maximus 9 formula it will be changed later anyways so now it appeared on the desktop so we have m9 f dot rom now one thing so uh, for me as i will be using uh, PO stepping 9700K the uh, latest version of this tool didn't work didn't work out for me so the latest version is from December 2019 so very recent one but it gave some weird issue at the uh, what was the name at the GOP dash V BIOS procedure so it always failed so uh, for me, when I want, wanted to mod, for example, 8700K or uh, PO stepping Coffee Lake 9th generation CPU, like PO stepping 1900K or 9700K, the a bit older version, I think it was, it was either of these two, so from March 2019 or the uh, November 2018, these two worked all right, but the very latest one, it had some weird issues at the GOP dash VBIOS. So uh, if you have a PO stepping 1900K, 9700K or 8700K, I recommend you try the older one if the absolutely newest one doesn't work. But if you want to use an RO stepping 1900K or 9700K, you have to figure this out before you do this. So you can see it from uh, the top part of the uh, CPU IHS, but pretty much it 
if it's an arrow stepping CPU, it has to be dated 2019 or newer. All 2018 batched uh, ninth generation CPUs are PO stepping. So just be sure that you know what your CPU is before you do this, because this is very, very picky, the whole process. But anyway, so let's assume now that you have a PO stepping 9700K or 1900K, what I have here. So I'm using a PO stepping 9700K. So I will be using the bit older version of the program. And uh, so I go to the tool. Well, I already made this once, but I will show you. So I will delete this all once. So I will take the file I just created m9f.rom. I will copy it to the folder over here. And uh, then we will just right click the all in one.exe, which we can see over here. You have some instructions in the readme uh, text file over here. So actually, here's the version. So 2019 March. That's the version I'm using. So in the old folder, it's this one over here, 2019-311. So right-click the all-in-one, run as administrator. Then it will search for the file we want to use. So we just go to the uh, mod, Coffee Lake mod tool, tool, and we select M9F the ROM. We click open. And now, be very careful. So here we can choose between two uh, things. So it's BO, option one, stands for G4900, G5500, 5600, 8100, and 8350K. And option two is for UO or PO stepping. So G5400, 8400, 8500, 8700 also stands for 8700K, 9600 and 9700 and of course 9700K. So I will press option 2. And now it will start the process. So it will update the ME version. We have to click I accept the license agreement. OK. Chipset is Z270. Now and in this process it always failed with the newest version. So the GOP dash VOP option thing. And remember, these procedures pretty much, they will almost, almost surely fail if you have some antivirus running in the background. Even the most common Windows 10 security things might uh, prevent this uh, procedure from uh, completing. So just remember that. It will fix the hyperthreading issue, the common one, and it will add the uh, microcodes of 8th generation CPU and the 9th generation CPU, which were listed in the options option we selected. So now it's now it inserted microcode and job done. That's pretty much it. So press any key to exit. And now just for overclocking purposes, sometimes the uh, all core uh, multi -core, multi core overclocking might have some issues because the BIOS only has uh, all cores max ratio for four listed cores. And since this is an eight core CPU, you might want to grab the uh, file it just created. So it's here. Asus Tech Maximus 9 Formula 1301 PCIe UOPO Hyperthreading ACPI blah 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 bin and grab it to the sync all core ratio so that we are uh, it will surely work when you want to overclock the CPU uh, later when we run the CPU in the motherboard. So just grab it over here and it will. Uh, run this process and it will recreate the file, uh, it, it will recreate a new file. So now we just press any key to continue. And it's the newer one. So uh, 2207 is the newer one and 06 is the older one. I will delete the older one. So now this is the completed file. This is the file we just have to put to, uh, to an empty FAT32 formatted uh, USB stick and then we will just flash 
this to the uh, uh, motherboard. So just take this to the desktop, for example, for now, because it has to be uh, renamed because this is an uh, this is an unofficial BIOS, and uh, the uh, for example on the a on Asus motherboards the uh, flashing procedure is very very picky. So uh, without forcing the uh, BIOS flashback procedure, you cannot flash any unofficial BIOS. And even then, when we want to flash an unofficial BIOS to the BIOS chip, it has to be named creative.rom. And it has to be the ROM. Dot bin will not work, and nor will dot cap. So open the UEFI tool yet again, right click, run as administrator, then we hit file, open image file, we will select the now created file, so 1301 modded one, open Intel image, right click extract, extract as is, so it will create the ROM, and now we will cre put creative. Now we have the file. So, so that's pretty much it. Now we just have to have an empty USB stick that has been formatted into FAT32 and we will just move this now created creative.rom to that USB stick. And now I will show you how to flash the BIOS. Okay, so here we have the system set up. So we have the uh, Asus Maximus 9 formula on the test bench, as you can see. The uh, Core i7-9700K is already in the socket. Two sticks of HyperX Predator 4133 Cas19, Samsung b DDR4 sticks, Galaxy 710 GT and Superflower 2000 Watt power supply. But actually, in order to flash the BIOS, we actually don't need anything else but the motherboard itself, plus the 24-pin uh, uh, connected to the motherboard. So we don't even need the CPU 8-pin connected to the motherboard. So we flash the, the BIOS by using the Asus USB flashback utility. So we have the uh, creative ROM on this FAT32 formatted USB stick over here, and it's placed on the uh, USB flashback port over here, so it's marked at the rear I.O. like that. And uh, in order to flash any unofficial BIOS, we need to short the two contact pads over here together, which I already showed you. And uh, the BIOS file has to be named as creative.rom. It cannot be creative.bin or creative.cap. So creative.rom, remember that. So we just flash the BIOS, so I will clear the CMOS quickly, and we turn on the power supply power, just like that, and we will press and hold the uh, BIOS flashback button at the rear I.O. for like 3 seconds, it will start blinking. So the blinking is a good sign, if the uh, file was named incorrectly, it would blink for like 2 seconds and it would go like static blue. So that means it, it doesn't work. So if it keeps on being like this, it means it's doing it uh, correctly. And it once I, towards the end of the flashing pr uh, procedure, it will start blinking faster. And once the USB flashback uh, process has been done, the whole light will disappear. Then you know you have uh, successfully flashed uh, flash the BIOS and then you can start the system. So that's pretty much how you do it, but for this process you don't need anything plugged to the motherboard, only the uh, motherboard 24 pin. Not, not the CPU, not memory, no graphics card is required to do this process. Okay, so now the light at the uh, USB flashback button at the rear I.O. is gone, that means the uh, flashing procedure has been completed. I also plugged in the uh, keyboard and mouse, which you need to enter the BIOS. So we will pretty much just turn on the system now. Uh, it might hang at some uh, debug code for a while, but it will pass. So just let it train for a while. So it might not do the initial training or post procedure that fast. And also you can leave the uh, 
contact pads short together, so it's not a, it's not like there's no risk of leaving them connected together. So it's not it's not just something you need to have for just the uh, flashing procedure. So if you want to flash some other bias later, you can do that when you when they are already connected together. So nothing will, nothing will get damaged when you turn on the system with those uh, two contact pads uh, connected together. So we will now pretty much just turn on the system by pressing the button at the motherboard. And we can see it gives debug code, so if if it, if it wasn't supported, it would pretty much just give OO debug code. But again, don't worry if it gets stuck at some code like 62 for a while. 22. So it's perfectly normal. And it might shut down like one or two times during the initial post uh, procedure. C and B2. And C. I'm not using the capture card for this, but anyway, so Asus Maximus 9 formula, bar revision 1301, so it hasn't changed. And uh, CPU Intel Core i7-900K at 3.6 GHz F1 So that's pretty much it The only thing you can notice when you try to overclock the CPU for example So when you put the AI overclock tuner to manual So you can only see it has four cores here when, where you can set a multiplier So uh, it doesn't matter if it's auto, like sync all cores or per core you can only set clock for maximum of four cores, but doesn't matter. Just make sure you have the Asus multi-core enhancement at, at auto, so not disabled. So it will run the uh, desired clock at, uh, I mean, across all of the eight available cores. And it's same thing at the CPU uh, configuration. So we can't see more than two, more than four cores at the active uh, processor cores section. So we can select from all to three. So one, two or three. So just remember that. But it doesn't matter. It will work just fine. It will set the uh, core frequency across all of the cores when you set 52 here. All right, time for the results and for the actual conclusion. So if you ask me, the overall process of getting a Coffee Lake CPU running on an old motherboard like the Maximus 9 formula is actually quite simple in the end, once you get it all done. So uh, once you get everything done and you get into the BIOS with the Coffee Lake CPU in the motherboard, it's actually pretty much the same thing as if you were running a newer Z370 or a Z390 motherboard. There's absolutely no significant difference whatsoever compared to a newer motherboard. Only minor differences here and there like the uh, uh, maximum amount of cores you can see in the BIOS, for example in the all-core CPU overclocking section where you can only set the multiplier up to maximum of four cores, but it doesn't really matter as long as you have made the BIOS file correctly, like the sync all-cores function and you keep the uh, multi-core enhancement enabled, it will run the set CPU, CPU frequency multiplier across all of the available cores, no matter what you see in the BIOS. So uh, there's that, so it's pretty much the same thing. And uh, well, I agree that the uh, required hardware modifications are still a little bit tricky. So for example, when you have to short the two uh, pads together near the uh, BIOS chip in order to force flash the BIOS, I personally recommend you use proper tin solder to uh, short those two pads together using some uh, other way like li uh, liquid metal tin is quite risky as it's liquid it might slip into some unwanted location and short something else so I would just use tin solder always uh, myself and uh, you can even just leave it there after flashing this uh, after flashing the motherboard it will not cause any damage when you turn on the system so if you have to uh, 
flash some other BIOS later in the future, it's already uh, ready for that then. And uh, getting the rig turned on is so much easier when you can locate the, so uh, the uh, socket occupied pin compared to uh, like painting the backside of the CPU. That was something I never really liked to, to do. So like painting the uh, backside of the 8700K, it was really, really annoying process to do. It takes quite a bit of time for the uh, silver paint to dry and it's very easy to uh, short unwanted uh, contact pads together that you don't want and then you have to clean them and make sure they are not uh, connected to each other. So it's really, really annoying. It's so much easier to do the same modification on the board and I'm sure you can locate the socket occupied pin based uh, what you saw on this video if you, if you watched it completely. So those are the steps you have to do, but once it's all done, it works really, really well. I then compared the uh, 9700K and the Maximus 9 formula to the one of the leading buffer boards of the Z390 uh, chipset, the EVGA Z390 Dark. And uh, I just wanted to compare how the uh, buffer boards compare against each other when it comes to overclocking. So this 9700K is the same CPU I used for the 5.2 GHz overclocking guide video. And first I compared what are like the vehicle requirements per given clock uh, between these two buffer boards. So uh, I used my XTEC EX505 multimeter to measure the accurate vehicle values and load. So I, that I, it, could, it would be easier to, to compare. I first ran the Maximus 9 formula and the lowest vehicle I could pass 5.2 GHz Cinebench R15 at was 1.3 to set and that is that is 1.344 measured under load. So when you use the uh, uh, load line calibration level 6 on the newer Asus Maximus series motherboards, it usually overshoots around 25 millivolts under load compared to what, what it's reading at idle. So like 1.3 3.2 is near like 1.345 under load and that was quite the, like the lowest value I could run it at. I then tried the same thing on the dark and it did surprisingly well so it now passed the uh, voltage that was so close on passing on the 5.2 uh, guide video. So the lowest vehicle I managed to pass on the dark was 1.3 O set and that is 1.298 measured under load when you use minus 25% small droop option. So the minus 25% is really really spot on. It's nearly 100% spot on with the set value under load. So the difference in vehicle requirement was between 40 and 50 millivolts. It's quite high if you ask me. Percentage wise it's only like three and a half percent so not really that much but when you think about it CPU requiring 1.3 volts for a given clock compared to like 1.35 volts it's quite a lot that could mean like 100, 100 megahertz difference again is that a high value or not that's all up to you I personally think it's quite high difference uh, then when it comes to memory there the difference was really really huge of course when you look at the uh, motherboard layout the uh, difference is really really obvious so I used the same memory sticks on both of the boards or oh, well I, I have run I have run these memory sticks on the dark for over one year now so I used the uh, HyperX Predator 4133 Cas19 sticks and I tried them on the Maximus 9 formula I only set the main timings, so 17, 18, 18, 28, command rate 2, and all of the sub timings were at auto, 1.25 on system agent and IO, and memory voltage ranging from like 1.4 to 1.5. Setting more than 1.5 usually does more harm than good, so it often just makes the memory even more unstable. So uh, I tried to boot or post different multipliers first. And it always refused to post multipliers like 4133 and 4000 even. So I couldn't even post 4000 MHz 
with the memory kit with those timings it would always give me either 55 or 49 debug code usually 49 however 3866 pro uh, timing i mean frequency multiplier worked well across all of the tests so even in HEI mem test with full capacity pretty much so that's pretty much the limit of the maximus 9 formula it's well explained by the memory slot design so the maximus 9 formula has two slots per channel memory design and it really harms the maximum frequencies you can achieve when talking about samsung bdi based ddr4 memories so the same memories on the dark i already ran these tests even one year ago so the same kit on the dark can do 4300 megahertz 1788 in timings in HEI mem test and in hyperpi 32 m benchmark with all cpu cores it can do even 16 17 17 timings with same voltage so 1.43 to 1.5 volts on the memory so the difference is really really high when it comes to memory almost half a gigahertz when talking about memory frequency so it's really really high there the difference is clearly visible so the overall conclusion is that the combination works really well modifying an old motherboard like the maximus 9, maximus 9 formula to support a newer cpu like the 9700k it's not about creating the most powerful cpu and motherboard combination it's all about saving money when you modify the old bio, the old motherboard bios to support the newer cpu you just want to save the cost of upgrading your motherboard to support the newer cpus so it, it's quite obvious that a really expensive z370 or z390 motherboard can beat these uh, older skylake or kp lake based motherboards with a coffee lake cpu so the uh, end result isn't that kind of surprising is it worth uh, investing a lot of money on a new, newer motherboard like buying z390 dark instead of using your old board that's all up to you it really depends on what you want to get from your hardware and where you want to put your money in so uh, that's pretty much it if you have thought about doing this uh, mod you, i can happily recommend you you to try it it's very easy with the uh, tool by winraid the tool works fab it works fabulously well you can modify any of the, like the motherboard bosses with like one simple click it works really well the hardest parts are the hardware level modifications but once you get them done it's really it works really really well from here i will be securing these hardware modifications on the board like the uh, socket occupied jumper wire so that it will uh, last there uh, when i put the original heat sinks and plastics back to the board and i will ship the combination back to the uh, guy who sent the, who sent the parts to me so uh, that's pretty much it if you like to see this video and a newer a new, and a new video about this topic then please give a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to my channel i have more content like this on my channel but most of all thanks for watching and i'll see you next time